Does Diego save Rodrigo's life? Episode 8 of Summer Heat wastes absolutely no time picking up where we left off. Rodrigo is drowning, and Diego tries to reach him. Echoes of the past bleed through, but Danilo's spirit helps Diego overcome his fears and save Rodrigo's life. He's pulled back to the shore, with no serious injuries. After saving Rodrigo from the ocean, Diego admits to Katarina that he feels a lot calmer and seems to have let go of his past. He wants to spend his future with her and sets up a trip to leave tomorrow. They're going to make a fresh start of it and head for Chile. Just before she goes, Katarina heads to jail to speak to her mother. She admits she's leaving, but her mother scoffs at the idea and questions whether Katarina has really told him who she is. This causes Katarina to get cold feet and confronts Diego, deciding they should break up. Her reasoning is pretty weak and centers on believing she'll hurt him, but the irony is, she's already hurting him now by breaking up. Elias meanwhile, peddles the story that Rodrigo tried to commit suicide. With his mum nowhere to be seen, and trouble with the construction, Rodrigo makes his choice and offers his help. What happens with Helena and the drugs? Meanwhile, Yasmin catches up with Miguel. He's a mess, especially after seeing her cheat on him last episode. Another character who's a mess is Marilia, who continues to deal drugs with Keiko. He hands over the package for her to sell, which, as it turns out, is the last one. When Helena presses Marilia on the truth, she reveals that Keiko will be paying his alimony in cash every month from now on. Only, that also means he's going to share custody of Sophia. After what happened with Sophia last episode, Marilia is completely broke and doesn't have any other choice. Well, Helena decides to repay her earlier kindness about facing her fears and decides to pay off her debts. As the pair embrace, it seems things are on the up for the pair. Hiding the evidence. Katerina, meanwhile, continues to hide her deception from Paula. It seems she's not grown at all since the opening episode, where she deceived the gang and went shopping behind their backs. She tries to cover her tracks by reformatting the reception computer. She feigns ignorance with Vilma who nonchalantly shrugs it off, claiming there's a backup. Uh-oh. That's a big blow for Katerina who realizes this could show evidence of her stealing. Does Conrado return to the island? He does, yes. Conrado returns and he's back working again. He's managed to get in the right headspace. He's spoken to his parents and things seem to be on the up, especially as he's realized this island is his real home. What happens between Miguel and Yasmin? Miguel is not in the right head space, though as we know, and eventually hashes out his issues with Yasmin. He calls her out for cheating, but Yasmin tries to explain everything. It falls on deaf ears, though as Miguel mentions he's losing his dad to Parkinson's. Since he's had all his meds stolen, and seeing Yasmin cheating on him, it resulted in a big panic attack that he's still suffering the after-effects from. Off the back of this, he decides to call things off with Yasmin. Heading home, he finds his dad sitting out on the rocks with a kite. He indirectly gives some words of advice, using a mayfly analogy, to basically show that life is short, and we should seize every opportunity given to us. Realizing he needs to resolve his issues with Yasmin, Miguel heads back to see the gang. Does Katerina reveal the truth? Unfortunately, drama soon ensues when Paula arrives with big news. She's traced the IP address back to this hotel. Someone inside has stolen her gear. As she grills Vilma about the cowboys working for her, with a slight hint of racism bleeding through, Katerina packs up her gear and hightails it away from the island. The police have been called, and that poses a particularly big problem. When Katerina receives a message from Helena about the hotel coming under fire, she heads back and admits the truth. She was the one who made the purchases. While Katerina is called in for questioning, Marija confronts Vilma about the DNA test she did behind her back. Holding the slip of paper, Yasmin sees the pair together and immediately believes he's gone behind her back. There's an awful lot of these misunderstandings in this show aren't there? Katerina admits to the stealing and tries to rationale it by claiming that the rich don't notice a small amount from being taken from their accounts. Even an amount like 10,000. 
one of the main reasons she did this was in relation to her mum, and we see her drop off an envelope to her uncle in a past flashback. I guess we were led to believe this is actually money. Anyway, Katerina apologizes to Rodrigo and Diego, eventually leaving in handcuffs with the officers. As she's taken away, Diego stops her and demands to know why. She coughs up a sorry, but doesn't divulge much more, leaving him to stew. Is Marija really Yasmin's father? So what's on the DNA test results? Well, Marija hasn't even opened the envelope and hands it over to Yasmin, telling her that what she does with it is entirely up to her. She stuffs it in her bag and takes off. Unfortunately this also means Miguel misses his chance to get back and see his lover, who takes one last look at the island before sitting by the shore. On her own, she contemplates whether to open the envelope or not. Eventually she does, and in doing so heads back inside to see the others. We don't actually see what's on the envelope, but given she was adamant about leaving, it would appear that the results confirm that Marija is her dad. Given this was her big motivation for coming to the island in the first place, it makes sense it's also the reason she's staying. How does Summer Heat Season 1 end? As the episode closes out, Rodrigo decides to prove himself and is hired as the manager of the hotel. With Elias on the verge of destroying this sanctuary for the lost and those cast adrift, everyone bands together and decide to fight back against the system. But is Rodrigo really on their side? Diego decides to leave and head back to Santiago, while Caterina leaves them all a message, apologizing for her mistakes and admitting she's had the best summer of her life. Theory of last episode so Summer Heat bows out with a conclusive chapter that doesn't really wrap up very much. This is ultimately a bait for season 2 which sees very little actually resolved. Conrado just rocks back up with very little fanfare and everyone is absolutely fine with it. We see no conclusion to this angle involving Miguel, while Yasmin is left in limbo and we're not given many answers to whether she's really Marija's daughter or not. Meanwhile, we don't actually get to see who robbed Miguel, unless I miss that completely, while there's very little depth and growth for anyone in this show. The best example of this comes from Katerina who begins as a spoilt, rich girl who's a bit of an opportunist with an addiction to shopping. By the end, she's still a spoiled girl and still stealing with a shopping addiction. There are some nice moments to this show though, namely that involving Helena and Marilia who do have nice conclusive arcs here after the drama they've been through. Unfortunately that's not enough to help raise this above mediocrity in what's otherwise been a pretty disappointing series. If this is renewed for another round of drama, let's hope the writing improves, because despite the beautiful landscape, this show settles in a murky shade of grey. There are an abundance of teen dramas on Netflix and Summer Heat feels like a bland conglomerate of them all. There's a touch of drug taking, a pinch of teen sex, a lot of deceptions and misunderstandings along with plenty of interpersonal character stakes. With a weak overarching story, a lot of melodramatic nothingness and a story that leaves things on a frustratingly open note, Summer Heat is a tepid and indifferent drama that has absolutely nothing to help it stand out in this crowded and saturated field. The story here centers on a group of diverse teens who all find themselves working on an island for the summer. Specifically, they're working at a hotel resort, catering for guests, and getting up to mischief in the process. With eight episodes showcasing a whole month of drama between them all, Summer Heat juggles a lot of different subplots, but aside from keeping the plate spinning, doesn't really do anything remarkable or overly impressive. In fact, this show seems to revel in its own cliched mediocrity. You got Yasmin, a spunky and tenacious teen intending on finding her birth father. Katerina is the rich, bratty girl, Helena the bubbling, innocent one, Conrado the quiet introspective musician and Miguel, who takes and deals drugs. Rodrigo settles into the suave jock of the group, while Marilia is a single mum. All the characters are so archetypal in one note, and none of them grow all that much over the season. Sure they all have dramatic events happen to them, but very few actually grow and acknowledge their issues. One such character who does, is Diego. He has some past trauma involving his brother, and by the end, this is handled both elegantly and with finesse. It's easily one of the standout stories of the whole show, but it's blanketed around the other stories that aren't all that impressive. 
Some of this can be attributed to the lack of central focus, which is a real problem. Episode 2, for example, brings up a case for evicted fishermen and Yasmin's drive to try and save them. Then it's completely forgotten about until episode 8. Between this, episodic bursts of contrived drama range from a whiffy signal cutting out for the afternoon to random characters from the past showing and causing havoc for a while. It's all quite uninspired stuff and the plot dynamics revolve around scenarios we've seen a million times before. The misunderstanding trope, when a character thinks they've seen something and misinterprets it, is used numerous times, while echoes of love triangles are here too. All of this adds up to a rather messy and formulaic teen drama with very little going for it. The colorful visuals and interesting locale essentially amount for nothing when the writing is so lackluster. And that ultimately sums up summer heat. This is less spicy heat and more ice-cold mediocrity. This Brazilian series is a real disappointment and across its eight episodes does absolutely nothing to stand out from the myriad of other dramas in this field.